I don't think I'll read anything better this year. I'm not kidding. I need some chapstick. I read nine books in May and I would say it was a really good reading month but there were some books looking back that I don't remember even reading and we will get to those books. Like usual I am going to start reviewing at the lowest rated book that I read that month. So this month I think my lowest rating was just three stars but honestly the book that I'm going to talk about that I gave three stars I it, it could have been a two. We'll go over that. And then the end of the video will have my four, four and a half, five star books. So you guys can skip there. I will have the timestamps down below. The first book is Practice Makes Perfect by Sarah Adams. I have read three. This is my third Sarah Adams book. This book is about the main male characters in When in Rome, his little sister. So it's like kind of like still in the family, you know? And I have a hard time like describing why I didn't like this book. I loved the characters and the personality of our main two characters. Like both of them I thought fit the roles of Grumpy Sunshine and like they both fit really good roles. Like this is not a bad book by any means. I think my dislike is how corny and cheesy the first half of the book was. I just didn't love how cheesy it was. Our book is about Annie who is very like traditional in the sense that she just wants to find someone to kind of settle down with and she's not really into dating. She's really really into reading romance books and she's kind of just like the quiet one in the family that always is babied. Like everyone babies her and she ends up meeting this bodyguard from the last book so you have you don't have to read both books but it helps to read like when in rome and then this one the bodyguard in that book she ends up fake dating his name is will griffin he's like all tatted up he's the bad boy he's like known as like one of the hottest bodyguards and they end up fake dating so she annie can kind of learn how to date because she's never done it nor been interested but she wants to find someone to settle down with and of course will is smitten with her from the get-go like there's no there was no like pining or anything they just kind of like in will's perspective you kind of just knew he he wanted her and because she was different she wasn't his usual the book is not bad it was just really short good filler book and a little like cheesy corny and a little bland but like not not a bad book there wasn't a lot of depth in these characters they were a little flat but it was still a cute storyline i just don't know if i would rate it down to like two or two and a half so i'm leaving it at three right now the next three star read luckiest girl alive now i did listen to this one as well as like physically read it because i already owned the copy but it became available at Libby. So I was like, I don't want to read it. So I'll listen to it. I was actually not expecting the, let's start from the beginning. This book reminded me a lot of My Dark Vanessa in the like, you can tell there's just like a hint of trauma and tragedy coming. And you got that hint the whole time. So I read the book first, then watched the movie. And I had heard a lot of rumors about the movie and how there was no, there's no trigger warning, there's nothing at the beginning that gives away that this book is gonna be triggering. And I think now, like in our time period in 2023, I can see how this book is very traumatizing. It touches a lot of touchy topics and there's a lot of talk about eating disorders, past trauma. I would even touch on like pedophilia a little bit and workplace trauma. And when I went into this book, I thought it was gonna be a little bit similar to My Dark Vanessa where there's like a teacher involved, you know, and like something, something happens there. No, there's a lot in here to unpack. Poor, poor Ani, like she went through so much. It was a very traumatizing book. Like it's not a good, it's not a good book. Don't read it if you're not wanting to cry um, or get emotional or feel like a little icky. Like it's not a, it's not a fun flowery book. It's definitely, she's definitely not the luckiest girl alive. Let's just say that. This book, three stars. It was okay. It was just on my TBR from a while ago and I was like, meh. Might as well read it. My next three star is Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. This book, let me just give you guys some background, okay? This is about Fern and Will. We got Wills everywhere. I swear Will is like the go-to romance book name. And I'm like, but why? Can we have some fun names? Like Fern, so cute, love it. Fern and Will in college met one day. 
they knew each other for one day they spent one whole day together touring i believe it's, it's toronto i could be wrong but they're touring some big city okay and fern's mother owns a lake resort kind of airbnb vibe place and Fern grew up at this resort her whole life. Her mom expects her to take over this Airbnb resort, but Fern does not want to. She wants that city life. She wants to open her own coffee shop. Will is an artist and fast forward nine to 10 years, they have not seen each other due to the fact that Will did not uphold his promise that he would meet Fern one year after the day that they met to kind of rekindle. It's a very, very copy and paste second chance romance book. There's a lot going on here. You get some second chance. There's a little bit of forced proximity because Will years and years later ends up helping Fern kind of with the resort and kind of helping her work through some financial stuff, but it's not really a romance. There's not a lot of romance in this and that's kind of why I was a little disappointed. It was about Fern and her growth and self-development and what she wants out of life. Does she want to own the resort and make her mother proud or does she want to do her own city life thing? It was a lot of that. But then what confused me so much is the end because Will, I won't say any spoilers, but at the end, Will kind of has this big personality shift and you're like following Fern and Will kind of rekindling. They're working together on this resort nine years after they first met. It's cute, it's wholesome, but then at the end, Will completely has a different personality. And I was like, where did that come from? You were this bubbly, outgoing person at the beginning, and then at the end of the book, for kind of like the conflict, Will has like this massive, like almost panic attack, anxiety driven. And I'm like, I get that you are allowed to, ha you're allowed to have anxiety, Will, but you haven't the whole book and now you just do. It just made, it was just, it felt thrown in. It felt like they were throwing in kind of a mental um, health issue to kind of stir the pot and I was like it, that was not needed at all and that's why I got three stars. This one was kind of a letdown because I loved Every Summer After from Carly Fortune so much. Cute summer read though and really freaking cute cover. Three and a half star read Coach by Devney Perry. Devney actually sent me this book and I just want to say thank you to her. This oh let me get comfy. This book is about I was gonna say Fern, but that's the last book I just talked about. This book is about Ford and Millie. Ford and Millie knew each other in college and they kind of had a thing for each other, but it was more like flirty friends. Okay, that's what we're gonna call it. Ford in college has a girlfriend already. So Millie really is just like a friend that he's kind of like attracted to, but he's not gonna do anything because he has a girlfriend. His girlfriend gets pregnant and he has to accommodate obviously for a baby and think about his future. So Millie and Ford kind of lose touch. Millie was kind of upset because she knew that eventually like Ford and her could have been together, you know, if that girlfriend wasn't in the picture. And then a baby comes around and Ford has to uproot his life for this baby. He does, but don't worry. He comes back to his college town to where Millie still lives and actually works for the football team, which Ford used to play on. So Ford is now the football coach at this college and Millie works in the sports administration office and they rekindle from there. It was so wholesome. I will say the spice, beautifully done, wonderful spice, but the whole book itself, the plot, the plot twist, or not even the plot twist, but the, the climax and the, the drama that happens was super predictable. And I didn't love the time jumps because this was in the span of like a whole football season, but it's a pretty short book and it happens really quick. So you don't really get to see the ins and outs of Millie and Ford's relationship or like the developmental part of their relationship. It's really just the highlights of their relationship, which I wanted more of. It wasn't my favorite book ever, but for a romance, quick read, really good. And she's also available on Kindle. All right, we're four books in. The first four star book, I actually don't have a physical copy of because I read it on Kindle. It is Parallel by Elle O'Rourick or Elizabeth O'Rourick. She wrote Waking Olivia, which I absolutely loved and I still have Drowning Erin on my TBR. But Parallel is one of four books. I have not read the other three. I've only read Parallel, but I did give it four stars. An incredible time travel 
deja vu feel kind of book like, so well written and so easy to understand i feel like time travel could be like very very confusing but this one is great super easy to understand let me tell you our main character quinn from a young age has had very lucid real dreams about another man about this man named nick and they're just super super real realistic dreams and it kind of creeps her mom out a little bit which is an important note for later in the book but quinn later down sorry i have to <laughs> jean shorts are just not comfy no so i'm gonna we're gonna just get real cozy while quinn is actually on the hunt for a wedding venue she ends up passing out and this kind of freaks her mom and fiance out they're like what just happened and it was from a very very real lucid dream that she had that overwhelmed her and she passed out so they end up taking her to the hospital and a doctor walks in and what is the doctor's name nick and they kind of have this instant connection both of them they just are like where do i know you from why do i know things about your life that like no one else knows like it's just very weird it's a weird coincidence but come to find out actually her whole life these dreams she's been time traveling to like a parallel universe it's not like time traveling into the future or into the past it's literally like you're hopping you're not going forward or backward like you're hopping over to the next little it's so good. It's not even 300 pages. Elizabeth O'Rourke has this way of writing that makes you just, I finished this book in less than 24 hours. Like a very quick, easy read. So spicy, like in the best way because literally she's dreaming it. Well, like she's time traveling in her dream. The next book I gave four and a half out of five stars. I listened to this one and I don't own the physical copy yet, but I did order it because of how much I loved it. Carrie Soto is back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. She did it again. I love Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing style. It's so unique and different to read a book where the main character is actually very insufferable. You don't even like the main character, but you're still rooting for them. For an author to write about a character who's very tough to like, but you still like them and you still want them to succeed and you're rooting for them, that's a really tough thing to do. And I think Taylor Jenkins Reid does it so well. Same thing with like Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, Malibu Rising, Daisy Jones, like all of these people or all of these characters seem very real and that's exactly what Code Carrie Soto does. Carrie Soto is a kind of a bitch but she knows she's a really good tennis player and her whole life her father has raised her to be the best tennis player. Carrie is just very cocky, very overconfident in herself and she does not get close to people because no one will understand her quote unquote you know like she's so dedicated to the sport and it's her, her passion that's she lives eats breathes tennis but when you're reading the book you're noticing that carrie is actually very lonely and she takes tennis so seriously to kind of cover up her loneliness and i think that there's just something about the way taylor jenkins reads writes and the way that you can become so close with some characters and they aren't even real which is so upsetting now we're getting into the fun stuff. We're getting into my five stars. I'm not going over these two books just yet, even though I bet you guys could guess what they are. <laughs> I did read The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. If you followed me for the past few months or if you're new here, I've been getting into more historical fiction books. I've read some Kate Quinn. Now I'm dipping my toes into Kristen Hanna. Really enjoyed this writing style. So some people might be able to agree with me. I love beautiful writing and I like very like descriptive writing. That's always wonderful. It's always great. But when it's too descriptive or too frilly and like describes a piece of, you know, bread like super, super intensely, I'm like, I just get over it. Let me get to the dialogue. You know, I did not feel that way about this book. It's a dense book. I actually listened to this book also. So I would occasionally read it, also listen to it. And the audiobook was really, really well done. It's a sad book because it's set in World War II. It's about these two sisters. I would say the overarching theme of this book is more about different roles that women had during the war. So our one sister, she's kind of the stay-at-home mom waiting for the husband to get back taking care of the kids, keeping them warm during the winter, keeping the Germans out of her house. Like that's one aspect of a woman during war. Other sister is a part of the resistance and a part of the rebellion. She's helping people out of Paris and like escape and seeing these two perspectives and giving kind of an idea of 
not just that like men should be celebrated during the war but women too because we do a lot here and any world war ii book or any history book i feel like is gonna bound to make you cry and i'm actually currently reading the four winds right now or is it the four or four winds i don't know but i'm reading another book by kristen hannah right now because i loved this one so much my two favorite books of the month okay this so i kind of want to talk first i'm going to show you guys the books and then i'm going to talk about the ratings and then the summary and whatever <sighs> mile high and the right move by liz tom ford so good so so good i am pretty sure i gave this four or four and a half stars and i gave this one five stars you guys if you have not read this book but you were you like contemporary sports romance these will become your new favorite books i'm not kidding by december when i do like a top 10 of the year either this one or both of these will be in the top 10. like you have to read these i will hype these up for Ever. Let's talk about Mile High first. Mile High is about Xanders and Stevie. Xanders is a professional hockey player in Chicago and Stevie is a flight attendant for Xanders hockey team. Xanders and Stevie kind of start, there's a rough start. I wouldn't call it enemies to lovers, but Xanders is constantly picking on Stevie to kind of bother her on the plane and it kind of turns into this flirty banter situation going on and they actually live across from each other like across the street from each other so they end up running into each other outside of work a few times and they start to kindle this relationship i thought mile high had a lot more mental health awareness in it to where xanders has been going to therapy for years and years due to some past things in his life and then stevie is kind of working on herself from the inside out trying to become more confident in her skin and xanders is there to kind of help her love herself a little bit more you read this one first it'll change your life but then the real fun starts here the right move is about ryan and indy indy is also a flight attendant but ryan is actually a pro basketball player so while xanders plays on the hockey team in chicago ryan plays on the basketball team in chicago and he's like the top basketball player like he's swarmed by paparazzi everywhere he goes he's very very he, he likes his alone times. So he never leaves his apartment. He's just always there. He's very secluded, has no friends. He's kind of like tough to his teammates. None of his teammates are really like f close with him because he kind of keeps his distance. And then we have Indy who is just like a tornado of rainbows and butterflies and books. And like she's just so fun and out there and extroverted. They come, I can't, I can't even, I cannot put this book into words. I really don't even think I'll be able to describe it. The amount of times I got butterflies or my stomach dropped or I was nervous or anxious or excited for these characters. Like I'm putting this, I'm, this is going to go right here. Like it's just going to be on display. I don't think I'll read anything better this year. I'm not kidding. I can't really say, say anything else, but let me tell you, there is forced proximity because indy ends up needing to move in with ryan for a little bit so they're kind of roommates for a while there's also fake dating there's groveling there's possessiveness there's grumpy sunshine more like introvert extrovert i'm i'm just gonna hold it right here like i'm not i'm not exiting the video i'm not stopping the video until you till you go buy it. I thought May was a very successful month. April was kind of stressing me out because I only read like five books. Then I was like, in May, am I gonna have time? And I did, I had plenty of time to read. I prioritized my audiobooks a little bit and I did a good amount of Kindle Unlimited. I think I actually did three audiobooks, three Kindle Unlimited, three physical books. So, um, and then I obviously bought books because like I read these both on Kindle, but then I bought them because I was like, I need them. I need them on my shelves so and if you have read any of these please do the usual comment down below comment down below your recommendations your thoughts feelings please like and subscribe to support me all of my social media is linked down below if you want to follow me on bookstagram instagram goodreads all of it it's down there see you guys in the next video